Okay, well, okay, so everyone at 2.2 solving absolute value equations assignment tutorial. So let's go ahead and click on that. And let's get started. All right, solve the absolute value equation absolute value of x minus 4 plus 5 equals 9 by graph. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is graph the right side, which is 9. Okay, so we're going to make sure that there's a horizontal line at 9 for each of the answers. There are. Okay, now this graph tells us we go to the right 4 up 5. Okay. So we start at the origin. So let's look. We go to the right four up five. So that A is okay. And then B is go to the right four up five. That's not correct. Okay, so we know it's not B. Okay. Now let's take a look at C. So we go to the right four. Up five. Oh, that's it. The right four or five. He's not correct. Then we go to the right four up five, and that's not correct. Okay, so the answer choice has to be A. Let's check the answer. All right, enter the solution. So to find the solution, okay, we look for where these two intersect. And we're not looking for the y values, we're looking for the x values. We're looking for the x is 0 and the x is 8. So I need my keypad at home. And 0. So I need that. Okay. Add numbers. Okay. Let's check. All right, that is correct. All right. Let's look at question number two. Okay, solve the absolute value equation. Two times the absolute value of x plus four plus five equals seven by graph. Okay. So the first thing we have to have is a horizontal line at seven. So that's correct. And now this graph tells us we go left four up five. So we go left four up five. That's okay. We go left four up five. B is not correct. Okay, so then we go left four up five. B is not correct. We go left four up five. B is not correct. So the answer has to be A. Let's check. All right, that's correct. Now to find the solution, we know they intersect here and here. Okay, and we're looking for the x values. So the x values here looks like at negative three, and this looks like it's at negative five. Okay, so. Here, click on my keypad, number negative three, and on that again. So it takes a second to do that, and then negative five. Check, and that's correct. Okay, all right. Now let's look at question number three. Solve the absolute value equation graphically. Give the solution to the nearest half unit. Okay, so the first thing we graph is a horizontal line at one. So we know that the line should be here, so it's not A. B is correct, okay. B is okay, and C again, it should be at one, so C is not correct. The next thing it says, it moves to the left four up six. But then it reflects over the x-axis. So we go left four up six.
Okay, so I just want to double check something before I explain it. So we go negative four up six. So it can't be B. And then here goes left four up six. And the graph should be like this, but it reflects. So the answer is. And then the answer is when the x value is here and here. So the answer says to put it in half units. So that means 0 0.5 units. Okay. So it looks like that's at negative. I'm going to say that's at negative one. Negative one. But then here, this is at a half unit, so I'm going to say that that's at negative 0.5. So let's check answer. All right. Find the points of intersection for f of x equals negative 2. I have to value of x plus 4 plus 6. All right. So the problem with this is you see how you can't just guess your way when it's not exact numbers. So what I recommend doing here, since that way didn't work, is let's solve this algebraically. So whenever the numbers are an exact answer, I, re again, recommend let's solving algebraically. So we have negative 2, absolute value of x plus 4 plus 6 equals a positive 1. So let's do that one first, okay? All right, so when I exit that out, it got rid of my work. That's okay, we'll type it again. Okay, so negative two, absolute value of x plus four plus six equals a positive one. So the first thing you're gonna do is subtract six from both sides. So then you get negative 2 absolute value of x plus 4 equals negative 5. Divide both sides by negative 2. So then you get the absolute value of x plus 4 equals negative 5 divided by negative 2 is a positive 2.5. Now at this point, you need to set it equal to a positive 2.5 and a negative 2.5. So you have absolute value of x plus 5 equals 2.5, and x, oh, wait a second, x plus 4, I don't know why I wrote 5 there, and get another reason to always be looking over your work as you're working, catch any mistakes you might write, so that's negative 2.5, and actually, once you set equal to the positive and the negative, you don't need to have two value time. X plus. So again, once you set it equal to the positive and the negative, you don't need to have two value time. Okay. So here, we subtract four from both sides. So x equals negative 1.5, and subtract four from both sides x equals negative 6.5 okay so you can see here looking at the answer the negative 6.5 is correct but we're off by 0.5 on here so bad number decimal 0.5 this out All right. Apparently, it didn't let me. 
Actually, the rate of that sun charge is negative. There we go. Now, without check answer and correct. All right, now let's take a look at question number. That's why I want that extra that. Now let's go to question number four. And of course it didn't want to erase my previous work. I don't understand why, but let's just go and delete this. All right. Solve the absolute value equation. Absolute value of three divided by two parentheses x plus one plus seven equals three by graph. Okay. So the first thing first is we have a horizontal line of three. So let's look to make sure every answer choice has a horizontal line of three. They do. Now this tells us to move left one up seven. So we go left one up seven. A is not correct. Here we go again from the origin. Left one up seven. B is not correct. Okay, and then we go left one up seven. You're correct there. Left one up seven, that's incorrect. So the answer choice has to be. All right, let's check. Now, looking at the answer, notice that they do not intersect. When they do not intersect, there is no solution. So the answer is. All right, correct. Let's move on to question number five. Okay. Solve absolute value of 2x equals 8 out the bracket. Graph this into the number line. Okay. So to do this, you set 2x equal to positive 8 and 2x equal to negative 8. And then solve. So divide both sides by 2. x equals Four, divide both sides by two, x equals negative four. So our smaller number is negative four. So let's put that there. And our larger number is positive four. And let's check our answer. Correct? All right, let's move on to question number six. All right. And let me erase the work from the previous problem. All right. Solve the equation. Absolute value of one third x plus two equals four. So the first thing you do is set one third x plus two equals positive four, and one third x plus two equals negative. Okay, and now solve for x. So here we're going to subtract 2 from both sides to get 1 third x equals positive 2. Multiply both sides by 3, so you get 3 divided by 3x equals 6. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so x equals 6. You're going to subtract 2 from both sides. You get 1 third x equals negative 6. Multiply both sides by 3, so you get 3 divided by 3x equals negative 6 on 3 is negative 18. That becomes 1, so x equals negative 18. All right, so the smaller number is negative 18, which is here, and the larger number is x equals 6, which is here. Check, correct. All right, now we're going to skip 7. And eight, I'm going to go to question number nine. And let me raise this. All right, pause that. I don't understand why it doesn't erase that when you go to the next problem, but it is what it is. All right. 
You consider the absolute value equation. One fourth times the absolute value is one half x plus three plus eighty three. How many solutions are there to the equation? So to first do that, we need to isolate the absolute value. Okay. So to do that, we have one fourth absolute value of one half x plus three plus eight equals three. Now the first step to isolate the absolute value is going to subtract eight from both sides. You get one fourth absolute value of one. Now, stop here because you notice you have the absolute value equal to a negative number. Whenever that happens, you have the absolute value equal to a negative number. We know that it is no solution. Okay? Check. That's because the absolute value can not be equal to a negative number. All right. Now let's look at question number 10. All right. Consider the absolute value question. Negative one third times absolute value of x plus 5 plus 6 equals 8. Okay, how many solutions are there? First of all, we need to isolate the absolute value. So we have negative 1 third absolute value of x plus 5 plus 6 equals 8. Okay, let's subtract 6 from both sides. You get negative 1 third absolute value of x plus 5 equals 2. Now, we need to multiply both sides by negative 3. So then you get a positive 3 divided by 3 times the value of x plus 5 equals a negative 6. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. You have the absolute value equals a negative number. So we know that whenever that happens, there is no solution. Okay? That's because the absolute value cannot equal a negative number. The answer is B. All right, now let's look at question number 11, okay? All right, consider the absolute value equation. And this. All right, consider the absolute value equation. Three parentheses, absolute value of x plus five plus two equals six. How many students are the equation? So the first thing we need to do is Isolate the absolute value. So we have three parentheses. It's hard to see the parentheses there. Absolute value of x plus five plus two plus six. So we need to multiply each of these by three. So that's three times absolute value of x plus five plus three times two is six equals six. Okay. So we're going to subtract 6 from both sides to get 3 the absolute value of x plus 5 equals 0. We're going to divide both sides by 3. So we have the absolute value of x plus 5 equals 0. All right. Now, here, whenever it's equal to 0, normally, when you have a number, you said it's equal to a positive and negative. But here's the problem. If you said x plus 5 equal to a positive 0, and x plus 5 equal to a negative 0, well, the problem is you still have x plus 5 equal to 0. So because of that, you subtract 5 from both sides, and x equals negative 5. And here, if you subtract 5 from both sides, well, a negative 0 is just still 0. Subtract 5 is x equals negative 5. Well, you'll notice you still have just negative 5. That's only one solution. The answer is three. So to graph that solution, which we already found, x 
is equal to negative 5. And check. Correct. So move on to question number 12. This. I apologize for waiting on erasing this. As soon as I find a faster way, I assure you I'll start using that, but I have yet to find one. Or a bigger eraser option, yet to find that either. All right. Consider the absolute value equation. Nine times the absolute value of 2x plus 6 minus 4 equals negative 4. How many solutions are there? Okay, so first thing that I say the absolute value. So we have 9, absolute value of 2x plus 6 minus 4 equals negative 4. So again, we're isolate the absolute value. So the first step is to add 4 to both sides. You get 9, absolute value of 2x plus 6 equals 0. Divide both sides by 9. You get the absolute value of 2x plus 6 equals 0. Okay, so we set that equal to 2x plus 6 equal to a positive 0, and 2x plus 6 equals a negative 0. Which, negative 0 just equals 0. So in essence, this is just saying 2x plus 6 equals 0. But you'll notice these are the same. So again, when it's equal to zero, we'll notice that there's only going to be one solution. Okay, now to find that solution, we're gonna solve for x, we subtract six from both sides, get two x equals negative six, divide both sides by two, x equals negative x equals negative 3. Check. That's correct. Let's go on to question number 13. All right. Consider the absolute value equation. Absolute value of 2x plus 5 plus 9 equals 6. How many solutions are there to the equation? So, again, we're going to isolate the absolute value. So we have the absolute value of 2x plus 5 plus 9 equals 6. So we're going to subtract 9 from both sides to get the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals negative 3. Since the absolute value is equal to a negative number, we know there are no solutions. Because the absolute value cannot be equal to a negative number. Okay. Now let's look at question number 16. Okay. Solve the absolute value equation. Negative 7, absolute value of negative 4x plus 5, minus 8 equals negative 8. If the solution is not an integer, give it in a fraction. So, first thing we're going to do is add 8. Nope. I'm going to rewrite it. I tried to Use it as a too small. So negative 7, absolute value of negative 4x plus 5 minus 8 equals negative 8. Okay, first step is we're going to add 8 to both sides. Negative 7, absolute value of negative 4x. 
five <laughs> equals zero. Divide both sides by negative seven. So then you get the absolute value of negative four x plus five equals zero. So set that so negative four x plus five equal to zero. We're going to subtract five from both sides. Now remember, because it's equal to zero, we only have one solution. Okay, so then that's negative four x equals negative five. Divide both sides by negative four. This divides and becomes one. X equals negative five divided by negative four, but a negative divided by negative is a positive, so the answer is five divided by four. So fraction, and my cut here, number five and four. So that, and let's check the answer. All right, now let's look at question number 19. There we go. There we go, if I move the eraser fast, it erases faster, so wait get that. A flock of grease is approaching a photographer flying in formation. The photographer starts taking photographs from the lead goose is 400 feet horizontally from her and continues taking photographs until it's 100 feet past. The flock is flying at a steady 40 feet per second. Enter, the, enter and solve an equation to find the time after the photogra or photographing begins that the lead goose is at a horizontal distance of 80 feet from the photographer. So I'm actually going to use a step by step feature to help you out with this one. All right, step one. The distance d in feet that flock flies in t seconds after shooting begins is d of t equals 40 t. The horizontal distance of the lead bird from the photographer is then d of t equals 40 t minus the horizontal distance here is 400 feet. So you're going to type in 400 feet. Okay. Find the time when the distance is equal to 80. So you're going to put four, absolute value of 4t minus 40 equals 80. Okay, step three, you're going to solve. And this is where I'm going to use the writing features to show you the solve. Okay, so we have 40t minus 400 equals 80. And 40t minus 400 equals negative. Okay, so that's basically for the first steps. We add 400 to both sides. Well, then you're left with 40t equals 480. Okay, so let's put that in. And then here we're going to add 400 to both sides. So then you're left with 40t equals 320. Okay, let's put that in. Okay, and then basically the last step is going to solve. 
So if we divide 40 by both sides, Forty divided by forty is one, so t equals. Now, here the zeros can divide, and then basically, in essence, you're looking at forty-eight divided by four, which is twelve. Okay, so basically, what I'm saying is, four eighty divided by forty is the same as forty-eight divided by four. So here, you divide both sides by forty. It becomes one, so t equals again 320 divided by 40 is the same as dividing 32 divided by 4, which is a second eight. Okay, so let's check our answer. So t equals first one is 12. Check. All right, so the lead goose is horizontal distance of 80 feet from the road after 12 seconds and 8 seconds. My guess is in this really it is what I think it is. They wanted the eight seconds first and the twelve seconds second. So just when you're answering, just be con just be aware that sometimes when you put an answer in it says it's wrong. It just might be a technical issue where you just need to put uh, numbers in different orders. Erase this. All right, now that was question number 19, and next question is 21. All right, 21. Terry's trying to place the satellite just on the roof of his house. At the recommended height of 36 feet. His house is 40 feet wide and the height of the roof can be described by the function negative 3 divided by 2 up to by excuse me, x minus 20 plus 30, where x is the distance along the width of the house. Complete the absolute value equation and determine where Terry should place the dish. All right. So the house is 40 feet wide, so you're going to put in 40 right here. Okay. And then Terry to place the satellite just at one of the edges of the roof, x equals 0, 40 Terry to place. So basically, what we have to do is solve this. Okay, so we have negative 3 divided by 2 up to value of x minus 20 plus 30 equals 40. Okay, so we're going to subtract 30 from both sides. So then you'll have a negative 3 divided by 2 times the value of x minus 20 equals 10. Now we need to multiply both sides by negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. 3 times 2 is a positive 6. And that's why we multiply by negative 2 thirds, because we want this to value to be 1. The value of x minus 20 equals negative 20 divided by 3. Now, this divided becomes 1, and you're left with the absolute value equals a negative number. Whenever that happens, we know there's no solution. So we can say that there's no place on the roof that is 36 feet high. And let's check. Hold on. All right. 
So apparently there's something I'm missing. So let's go to step by step. Okay, the satellite just needs to be 36 feet above the ground. Ah, I used 40 and not um, 36. So my mistake, and I'm glad I kind of made this so you can see, be careful of the distraction number. They're distracting you with the 40, but really you need to use the 36, okay? Okay, so then this is wrong. All right. So then here, now we need to solve this, or I'm sorry, isolate the absolute value. So let's do that here. So negative three divided by two, absolute value of x minus 20 plus 30. Equals 36. So here we're going to subtract 30 from both sides. Okay, so then you get negative 3 divided by 2 has the value of x minus 20 equals 6. Now we're going to multiply both sides by negative 2 thirds. Then negative two times negative three is a positive six divided by a positive six. Plus two by x minus twenty equals negative two times six is negative twelve. Oh, oh, that's okay. Negative twelve divided by three. So then this divided becomes a one. So you're left with x, sorry, the absolute value of x minus 20 equals negative four. So let's go back here what they're asking for. So that part is going to be let's see negative 12 divided by three. So oh I'm sorry, this part will be equal to six. Worked ahead of where they were, so give me a second. Six. Check. So that's the value of x minus 20 equals a negative four. Check. All right. And I'm saying that there is no place that's 36 feet high. Which makes me question, that's the answer I put in the original. So I was actually correct, and they said I was incorrect. But, oh, it's because of that number. But either, either way, the absolute value is equal to a negative number, and there you go. All right. So, again, and this is why sometimes I'll keep my mistakes in the videos for tutorials. So it can help you understand that sometimes, like in this case, you can see that half my answer was correct, the other half wasn't. So be aware of that when you're answering, especially multi-step questions, that when they say you're incorrect, it might not mean that you're completely incorrect. It just means part of your answer is incorrect, okay? So that's a good lesson in this problem. Well, it's obvious, okay? All right, last question. For what type of real world quantities would the negative value answer for an absolute value equation not make sense? Okay, so you can't have negative length, you can have a negative bank account, you can't have negative distance, you can't have negative time, you can have negative temperature in Fahrenheit and in degrees. Okay, and then let's check. 
All right. And there you go. Hopefully that should help you with the assignment. And just remember, mistakes are okay. They're actually sometimes the best things for us because they help us learn. I think what's the saying? It's great to learn from your mistakes. Okay. So with that, hopefully this tutorial will help you answer all your questions and have a wonderful Wildcat day.